I bought my used 2005 Triton ATV trailer a few years back with its deck being only in, I'd say, fair condition. It had been left out in the weather and the original marine plywood was showing signs of dry rot. It's been a good trailer. It's light at about 500 pounds and it can carry a 2,500 pound payload. We've been using the trailer not only to haul our quads but to transport lumber and building materials, to haul junk to the dump, and to help move friends' furniture. Now since the deck was already kind of weak, we really didn't try too hard to protect it very well either. And finally, after it got some big holes, it was time to put a new deck on. Now after installing the new deck, which I'll go over later in this video, I added some accessories, a cargo box in front, and a way to use the trailer to transport our kayaks and bicycles with a mounted Yakima rack. So you can be sure we'll take better care of the trailer now that it's been refurbished. If you have one and you have to store it outside, at least throw a tarp over it and tilt the front or the back up so that it'll drain water. You'll get a lot more years out of the deck that way. The cargo box holds utility items that are dirty, bulky, or fumy. I already had this truck bed toolbox so I just needed to find a way to attach it to the front of the trailer. I didn't want to take up space on the deck itself, so I mounted it on the trailer's tongue. So not to compromise the integrity of the tongue by drilling holes in it, I used long bolts that straddle the tongue structure and connect together with a steel plate. A bolt on either side of the back corners of the box passes through the trailer front, stabilizing the right and left ends of the tool chest. This Yakima rack used to mount in tracks atop my old truck's camper shell. It carries two bikes and two kayaks. I needed a way to distribute the stress and make the connection between the rack's towers and the trailer. The length of the bike rack tire trays determine the spread between the rack's front and back bars. So I built these pylons in my wood shop that the towers bolt to. These in turn mount to the trailer's deck. The rear pylon bolts are long and spaced to go all the way through two of the trailer's cross members, solidly connecting to hard points. The front pylons attach to the plywood deck only, using bolts and fender washers. These bolt close to the seam where the deck is screwed down to framing, making it a fairly strong attachment. The new decking material is a good grade of half-inch plywood bought from Home Depot. I looked into using marine plywood, as was originally used by the manufacturer, but decided not to go that route for these reasons. It's expensive, it was a little hard to find, and although waterproof glue is used in its making, the plywood itself is not waterproof, and if not sealed, will absorb water and rot just like ordinary plywood. So I opted for half-inch AB plywood that I sealed both sides and all edges with many coats of bare deck over. After applying thick coats of paint, I used a texturing roller to rough up the finish for a nice grippy surface. One thing that I wondered about before starting this project was the way that I would attach the deck to the frame. I backed out one of the old deck screws and saw it went into the aluminum through a threaded hole. So how would I find the exact location of these tapped holes once the new wood was laid over and hiding them? On Triton trailers, the decking is slotted into tracks along the sidewalls. Each plywood panel, one after another, is slid forward into place from the rear. I could always use self-drilling, self-tapping steel screws and drill new holes in new locations, but I was determined to use the existing tapped holes and if they were in good enough shape, reuse the old screws too. The solution revealed itself when I slid the old panels out. They were in pretty bad shape, but they all slid out intact 
and they were perfect templates for the whole locations and even the new panel dimensions. I laid out the old panels on top of the new wood and marked the screw locations through the old holes. Using the old panel's edge, I drew a line where the new panel would be cross-cut. Then it was just a matter of cutting the new panels to size, drilling pilot holes on the marks, and countersinking each hole so that the screw heads would sit flush. After heavily painting all surfaces, the new panels slid in easily, and the holes lined up perfectly. The old screws were still usable, eliminating the need to match and find new ones. Here's a drawing of the trailer's frame layout. This represents the trailer's front. Cross members run 24 inches on center. These with the dotted lines aren't that important to note, as they fall within the middle of the panel's field. But there are a few screws that will go in these, so don't forget to mark and drill them. These are the important ones to note as these are the 48 inches on centers and these are where the panel edges will butt and screw down. Notice that these two are closer together. A narrow strip of wood will go in there. This yellow piece represents a full 4x8 sheet of plywood. This green one represents an old original panel. You're going to need four full sheets of plywood, one of which you will cut the narrow strip from and have nearly a full panel of excess to use on another project. As I described earlier, this is what you're going to do to use the old panel as a pattern template. Lay the old panel on top of the new sheet, butting up the three edges. Draw the cross-cut line. And mark all the screw holes through the old panel. Cut the new panel to size. Drill the pilot holes, including the countersink. Remember that the screw locations on each panel was not machined, but drilled by some worker at random. So be sure to label each of the four panels, one, two, three, four, A, B, C, D, or whatever you like, because each will have its own unique screw hole pattern. And because of this, the orientation will matter as well. Lay them out in the order that they'll slide in and don't flip or rotate them around or the screw holes won't match up. Well, I hope you found this video helpful if you're planning to redeck your trailer. At the time I did mine, I checked online and I couldn't find much about this on the forums or YouTube. Please comment if you have questions or can contribute information. Until next time, happy camping.